offshore industry in Sri Lanka. Former as well, the former managing director of Colombo Dockyard and former chairman of Port Authority. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I cordially invite you to conduct this session uh, while our, uh, now we are, uh, we, now this is the time to start up our session, sir. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to various uh, participants all over the world, most uh, probably. I'm Dr. Sarato Besekara, as she has mentioned, and I will share my information what I intend to present to you today. Today, we are going to talk about blue economy, which is a quite a new subject for everybody. Uh, and I assume that whatever I'm going to tell you, for some people, it may be a completely new uh, idea or new information. But for some people, this is one of the uh, uh, one of the information whole world is looking at, one of the developments whole world is trying to concentrate on, specifically due to various uh, incidents which have taken place in all over the world in the ocean. I will uh, start with this uh, slide where I... Nil Sagar Karunu Karna Atambulak Karagat, Pramani can sue the Nukuta Dapi, Asun Panavati Benava, Mata Prekshak over Madak Vedikalak dinner, own Handunwa dinner, Maknisadiat, own gave Wapasaria Handunwa dima, Me Saka Chavi, Idria Sandha, Behavin, Vedagat Venanisavi. Api Mulinma Asuna Panamanela de. Adapi Matrukava, Nil Artike Hivat, Sagar Artike. May we share Filibandava Karunu Karna, Atambula Karagat, Pramani can sue the Nukuta Dapi, Asun Panavati Benava, Mata Prekshak over Madak Vedikalak Dinna, own Handunwa Dinata, Maknisadiat, own gave Wapasaria Handunwa Dima, May Saka Chavi, Idria Sandha, Behavin, Vedagat Venanisavi. Api Mulinma. Asuna Panaman Ladde, Achar Sarat, Obe Sekaranta, Etuman Pasugi Vatavi, Yasune, my Hiti, Etuma Visin Yotana Kernel Ladder, Me Mahangi Matrukava, Adadine, Ape Nila Matruka about a Patuena, Abe Obutumante, Vishishin Mistuti Vantavena, Me Pradesh, Pilibandava, Viduli Pandamak Dalva, Alo Kyak. Janita Karavi Manisavin, Mulumaha Jati Mavadani, Ekara, Yomukaranata. Saratobi Sekaran Pilibanda Katakara di Bohu, Nove, Europe, Veni, Bohu, Dun Ratavela, Kanuza Tel Nishpadane Saha, Gavishane Pilibanda, Bohu Addekim Labagat. Okay. Sorry for the little uh, hiccup. Uh, can you see the screen? Everybody can see the screen. Now, you can see Sri Lanka, though we talk about our total land area is 65,000 square meters. We have an ocean right around our country. As per the map, you can see quite a large area and the expected territorial seas after delimitation is over. 75,000, which is much more than our land. The area within our jurisdiction, as well as the area which we are expected to get after delimitation, uh, it will be a quite a large area, which we can harness 
and develop in order to generate income for the country. And uh, from, you can see in time to come, you will uh, understand the potential we have in the resources right around our country in the ocean. Okay. From the sea bottom and in, in the water area as well. Uh, what is blue economy? Blue economy is categorized into various areas where I can see that uh, if, we, if, we, if we look at the whole aspect, sorry, uh, of various uh, uh, sub subjects or areas that we can cover, is initially we can talk about uh, one second. Uh, Starting with uh, sport fishing, uh, which is a very popular activity for Europeans or foreign foreigners coming to our country, who will go around in fast boats, which are available in the country, and go on catching large fish, and they put them back, and this has become a uh, a revenue generating activity for Sri Lankans and for foreigners. And if you intend to come to Sri Lanka or develop any industry where you want to do, do sport fishing, there are a lot of companies which will do the provide the facilities to uh, provide you the facilities as well as the uh, locations where you can carry out your activities. Then we also look at, uh, this is within the sphere of blue economy, training of seafarers, which is a quite a expanded uh, activity and developed activity in Sri Lanka. And as you know, in the world over, there are over 1.6 million seafarers and Sri Lanka trains only about 1% of that seafarers which are providing a service right around the world. And there is a good opportunity which everybody can uh, think of to come to Sri Lanka and develop or oh, enhance the current training facilities for young Sri Lankans to become seafarers within various field of the industry and provide the services to the shipping industries all over the world. Then we are also quite uh, uh, famous in uh, providing facilities for water sports. Right around the island, we have blue sea, as you know, blue ocean. And right, the sand, which is famous, beaches, famous among the visitors to our country. And there are water sports, and there are many companies who provide the water sports, and the investors can come and develop or, or establish their own service facilities to provide water sports for the, uh, and attract more and more foreigners and generate income. Now, in addition to what I have mentioned, in developing you know the game fishing what I call is sport fishing and various other water sports quite a industry what countries now trying to develop is nautical tourism and boat yacht building 
and I, you can I can show you a boat which is built in Sri Lanka by a company here, which is actually one of the famous companies called Sri Lanka. They build this. Uh, you can see in the picture. You will see this solar powered boat, which is available for many foreigners or seafarers will come here. They can either travel in there or sail in those boats. And also our target from our Chamber of Marine Industries is to develop this industry so that various investors can come here, come to Sri Lanka and develop this industry to uh, generate income for the country as well as for your own company. Now, uh, Boat building and yacht building is quite uh, developed here. There are various uh, uh, boats we are using, which are boats made of fiberglass, aluminium as well as steel. And there are many companies which make fiberglass, which is FRP, we call it, reinforced fiber, made, which is quite uh, known. And we are also trying to develop in Sri Lanka uh, industry which is we call grow boats campaign which we are going to promote under the marine sector by the way we are going to have a boat show end of october where we are trying to we are inviting many foreign uh, companies who build boats and who are involved in the nautical tourism to visit sri lanka and uh, see what are the opportunities to do the investment in boat building and nautical tourism. Now, the government has also developed a plan to uh, completely revamp the tourism principles of tourism, where Sri Lankans are quite, I mean, a lot of foreign visitors come to Sri Lanka to see the historical sites as well as enjoy the beaches and also, of course, the culture in the country, which is very famous. And now the government is also trying to uh, develop the nautical tourism, which is uh, taking uh, quite a sailing far ahead. And we expect that to develop in time to come. And this is a very good opportunity for people to come and invest. Then we have also under new economy, uh, Sri Lanka is also planning to develop a marina in Gold Harbor, which is on the way now, they are, they are trying to invest, uh, invite investors to come and, uh, you know, uh, start a marina. And also we are trying to develop various uh, other, we have about 23 harbors, fishery harbors right around the country. And gold, go, right around the country, main harbors are Gold, Trincomalee, Colombo, and Kankesan and Jaffna. There are harbors where, in, in addition to the 23 numbers, harbors, fishery harbors we have right around Sri Lanka, government is uh, planning to offer investor to come and take section of the fishery harbor so that they can develop a mini marina. Mini marina concept is also quite uh, popular here, where I mentioned about the grow boat campaign, which means we are trying to, government also trying to develop a culture uh, among our own Sri Lankans to uh, buy their own yachts and boats so that they can have a parking facility in these fishery harbors. Today, only about two or three fishery harbors are providing the facilities to for parking or mooring or anchoring their yachts, which are used for nautical tourism. Individuals can also buy a boat here with our low cost of uh, production. Uh, you can even, you can get the local companies to build your boat or you can come as an investor to develop the nautical tourism and buy the boats here or you can even start your own boat manufacturing outfit to provide boats to the nautical tourist industry. 
Now you might be, you might have heard our neighboring country, which is quite a beautiful country with about 2000 islands. Uh, we are trying to attract the yachts and leisure boats to Colombo, Sri Lanka. And if there are any Maldivian companies who are interested in coming to Sri Lanka, which, uh, which is quite close to our country, and uh, start developing their own business in this country. The boat show we intend to have hold in October will be a very good chance where you can uh, get to know the boat builders and what type of facilities Sri Lanka can give. Okay, in addition to nautical tourism and the blue economy, we are looking at sustainable and renewable energy sector which needs development. Currently, quite a large uh, wind power plants are, have been installed in the northwest part of the country as well as in the east. And this is area we are, now we are promoting to develop wind farming for uh, developing sustainable and renewable energy. Uh, which can be installed in oh, these wind farms can be installed in the ocean, like in the uh, west and in the North Sea. I think many oil companies are moving into this so that they, it is actually the, the the you know the using of sustainable and renewable renewable energy is uh, carbon friendly. It means that it is it does not affect the environment. As such, such. Yeah, the whole world is uh, looking at uh, uh, green economy. And then we are also trying to, also investors can develop uh, boats or yachts which are uh, powered by solar power. Then, the, then in another area where we are looking at is offshore energy solar power plants, development of green hydrogen for power, which is a green hydrogen has been a catch word here. Uh, one Indian investor has already agreed to install uh, wind power plants in various islands in the north and the east. And a lot of other investors can, uh, if they are interested, they can approach the Board of Investment or Ministry of Industries and check what are the opportunities they have in developing uh, wind power and the solar power. And the wind power and the solar power can be used to uh, generate green hydrogen, which is environmentally friendly hydrogen, which are now used in many vessels, as you see uh, in Norway and in Holland, they are, they are built large vessels which are run with hydrogen. You might have heard the famous, uh, uh, one of the millionaires who sent a who sent rocket, you know, uh, he, he he opted to use the green hydrogen, so that that they he gives a certain uh, you know encouragement to everybody that using any other fossil fuel can deteriorate the environment worldwide. Then we go into the next uh, area of that development is area which I am quite uh, uh, conversant and also uh, uh, honestly I'm trying to push our government to develop offshore energy right around Sri Lanka, which is another main area where Sri, Sri Lanka and also the European countries are trying to develop. Now, one of the area is energy, developing energy generating energy using waves and deep sea current. Few companies have expressed their interest to come to Sri Lanka in the southernmost part of Sri Lanka near Hambantota, where you know that we have a very uh, newly built harbor, which is now managed by a Chinese company. They further away near the, from the harbor, they are trying to develop uh, sustainable or energy renewable energy using the deep undercurrent in the ocean and also in other areas where you can harness the electricity using the waves uh, 
on the surface of the ocean and generate power. Now, uh, this has become a, again, very popular uh, source of energy which companies can uh, think of developing in our company. Then we have another area called blue biotechnology where uh, few companies have already invested in Sri Lanka to use various, uh, you know, the living things in the ocean to uh, develop medicines and uh, bacteria and fish to be developed for medicines. This is area where blue economy, within the blue economy sphere, you can think of to develop. Now, this is uh, another aspect where you can hear this. Ayesh Indranath Ranavaka Matuan, Etuma Pradana Vidaya Niladari Sad Yaksha Vidheta Katu Karnama, Sagara Sampat Vishleshade Sandhavu, Adena Aitene, Evagema Divara Maha Sam Milene, Hitapu Upper Sabha de Dure Darana Ladde, Ranavaka Mahatavi Sin, Sima Saita Sinor Padaname, Hitapu Kalamanakara, Dexavaria Vidheta, who Katu to Karai in. Now, if you see, I am not, I, I am not able to put the whole uh, snippet. This is what he has been also promoting, which is uh, development of fisheries and marine tourism, which I mentioned through blue economy under the concept of United Nations SDG number 14, life below water. He has been a active, mem active uh, supporter to de develop the blue economy. Uh, and uh, the areas, if I read this little bit, would get more clarity for all of you. Ocean covers two thirds of Earth's surface area. An estimate of three billion individuals depend on marine and coastal systems for their livelihoods, both directly and indirectly. Important maritime activities such as fishing, which I detailed, which I spoke about, sea transportation, tourism, I mentioned, offshore mining, which I have not covered, but there are a lot of areas where there are minerals under the seabed which are which need to be harnessed to develop to explore and energy which i mentioned generation and uh, it should uh, it is plays a significant significant role in the national economies of many countries including sri lanka now further he mentioned blue economic and sri lanka 530000 square kilometers which i showed you in the first map which means not only the 65,000 square meters, we are talking about 530,000, which is about six times the, uh, more than six times our land mass, which can be developed to provide benefit to the people. There are extensive lagoons, mangroves, coastal marshes, abandoned with resources, which need to be harnessed and developed. And you are welcome to come and study these areas where you, we can provide the necessary know-how to this. Another area which Ayesh Ranavak has mentioned also, I endorse that, is developing multi-day fishing vessels. You might be knowing, we are still in early stages, so infant stages of fishing industry. We have a lot of fish, but our fishermen are not geared to use high-tech uh, boats and equipment to catch fish. Fish can be exported to Japanese market and all over the world. We do export. But unfortunately, Sri Lanka doesn't have multi-day multi -day fishing vessels where you can go for weeks and months with ice making facilities so that you can preserve the fish for exporting to countries like Japan, which is of high quality for sashimi and sushi and this is a good area where investors can come to Sri Lanka and offer to the government that they can invest in uh, deploying multi-day fishing vessels so that the ordinary fishermen who only use 45 to 55 feet long boats so they go out for 21 days to do the fishing carrying a lot of ice in their boats, many boats do not have the ice making facilities. 
this is a, one of the major areas which need to be developed in Sri Lanka. Our small island, which is Maldives, it's highly developed in this field. And there's a very good opportunity in Sri Lanka to develop this industry so that you can not only help the country and the economy, you can help yourself. Now, uh, this is an area that there are a lot of proposals have been made and uh, government, Fisheries Harbour Corporation and the Fisheries Corporation and the Ministry of uh, Industry and Board of Investors are eagerly waiting for investors to come to develop this industry. Now, another area in the blue economy, which has been quite popular in Sri Lanka, especially in the Trincomalee area, uh, in one or two investors have installed uh, in the in the recommended eastern part for fish farming. You might be knowing in Norway they have uh, farming of uh, various uh, expensive salmon fish, and uh, <coughs> and they what they do in this farming is they put uh, small finglings, like we call them, I think. For more than fish, and these companies, uh, you know, uh, feed them, and when they grow up, they become about one or two feet long, sometimes, and they freeze them or export to the market. This is an area where a lot of uh, foreign investors can come because this industry has still not been developed. So this is an industry where you can get it. And lately, the uh, government has uh, proposed to develop sea cucumber, which is a sought after fish by many uh, Eastern Asian, uh, sorry, Asian developed countries, which can be one of the source of it. Now, within the blue economy, we are also looking at. Uh, it, you know, developing the country which needs to attract investors to develop the marine and offshore engineering sector, which is the one I am specializing. You can see on the right, left hand corner, you can see an oil rig, which is called Jakab oil rig. Currently, these oil rigs are after completing a assignment uh, elsewhere in, in other part of the world. They need a holiday period until they get the next job. Sri Lanka is a very attractive location for them to bring their rigs, or we call it FPS, or floating production, storage, and offload ships, which are quite large ships. In Trincomalee Harbor, the local companies bring in them, and they, they keep it, we call it hold the layer. They keep it for years and months and do the repairs, everything, and get ready to go for the next assignment. Now, our intention is to develop the whole industry, not only bringing these vessels for layup facilities. Our proposal is to develop the whole industry so that like uh, countries like Singapore, uh, Dubai and even Oman, I think they are now developing the whole industry. You don't have to have oil in here, despite the fact that we have a uh, plan to develop areas, various areas to in the ocean to uh, explore and produce uh, natural gas, which is which will I'll show you some details on that. And EDB, therefore, EDB has formed this advisory committee, as you say, see in this. Line. Uh, it is not only shipbuilding. Sri Lanka has a quite a good shipbuilding company which is doing building ships for all over the world and uh, mainly supported by Japanese technology. And there is a good chance of expanding the existing shipbuilding to offshore design, construct, and project management sector, which means you not only uh, build or repair the platform. You can establish your project management company or engineering procurement commissioning construction company 
in Sri Lanka. You might have heard about the port city next to the Kalambu Harbor, where quite a large area, a few hundred hectares, are available for investors to come and establish their offices. And they are trying to develop this area for high end companies. Now, I used to work in the Scandinavian countries, and uh, those days, most of the uh, specialist people, specialists are from the European part of Europe, or even some from Asia, as many as well. Now, Singapore has understood the potential in this, and they have formed their area, they have converted Singapore into a thing called, uh, you know, center of excellence where they will have their engineering institutions and uh, do the designs. And the companies which are building in Europe get the designs done in Singapore. Now, my request, my proposal, our proposal is to develop, bring the center of excellence from Singapore to Colombo Port City. Government has given a lot of facilities to companies to start the uh, offices in those in the Port City. Now, this is not in the ocean, but it is part of the low economy where you can do the development, design, quality control management, project management uh, in designing oil platforms and also commissioning repairs, maintenance. As you know, there are a lot of Sri Lankans all over the world, Dubai, Singapore, and I was speaking to somebody in Seychelles a lot of Sri Lankans are who are experts working in these countries. They can come back to our country and deliver their knowledge to you to develop further. Uh, and then in this marine and ocean sector, uh, this industry focuses on catering to the demand of oil repair, modifications, maintenance, conversion of tankers, you might have you might have you may know that large tankers which come out of the service are converted into floating production storage and offloading ships which are cheaper than building a new ship to do the drilling storage and offloading into the tankers and oil field equipment supply manufacturing and service then Sri Lanka can also build offshore support vessels. Once you develop this industry in marine and offshore sector, certain companies may need to establish their own uh, offshore supply support vessels and chartering offshore vessels. This can, they can be built in Sri Lanka or bring from abroad and uh, station them in Trincomalee mainly or maybe in Ambatata. And for providing, which I mentioned, there are cold and hot oil rig layup facilities. And after COVID, we were trying to develop this industry. Then I just mentioned about establishment of engineering consultancy companies like Halliburton, Bechtel, Fluor, Saipem. These are the known names of companies where I, I used to work for all this. Uh, they can come to Sri Lanka. You know, Sri Lanka is a resplendent island where expats who want to come here, settle themselves, have their offices in uh, Port City or in uh, beautifully uh, built Kalambu City or even Trincomalee or even uh, in the wilderness. They can, you can go from one end to the other of the island in four or five hours. They can enjoy life with their children. Children get, can go to international schools here. And uh, you can have a uh, marvelous lifestyle in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, I don't have to explain about how good Sri Lanka is. And then we can have these uh, global players, shipbuilding and marine engineering and offshore construction company to come and establish, like Dubai and Singapore, I mentioned. And uh, we need to have a collective action to support the industry, from industry stakeholders and the government and the Sri Lankan missions abroad can promote this to be developed in Sri Lanka. And uh, I think Port City also having a roadshow, they are trying to 
promote now after uh, developing their own uh, act or parliament, act of parliament or their own regulations to ease the investment in Sri Lanka. I'm trying to promote that area because this is part of the development of blue economy. Then we are talking about ship owners, operators. Oh, these are the companies target audience who can think or uh, you know decide to come to Sri Lanka. It's a new area, new concept which we are promoting, promoting. And I think a lot of Middle Eastern countries are now moving far ahead. And late recently, even a, a Dubai, or in Dubai. Right off, which was just doing ship repairs and tank repairs, not recently, but the last few years, they have now formed their own design and construction of large oil field equipment. And EPC companies have been performed, engineering procurement and companies, and a lot of uh, European companies who are were involved in this have moved out, are moving out into Middle East as well as to the five. They have listed here the companies who can promote themselves here. And if you need any kind of assistance, there are a lot of experts here to help you in the uh, in you know giving some assistance in the in 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 the local uh, atmosphere, local industry, how to get in the tournament and board of investment. Uh, Minister of Industries has embarked into this attracting foreign companies to come and invest. We are, we are, we are promoting uh, thing called uh, FDI, foreign direct investment. Which we, we need the foreign direct investment to come out of this little bit of a, I won't say miserable situation, but we were, we had a problem. Now I think the government is taking steps, restructuring. I hope this will work so that foreign companies can build their confidence to come to our country. Then uh, there's a proposed uh, scope for developing marine offshore industry, stepping stone to move in the right direction of developing our industry, existing marine offshore activities can be further developed. History. Namely, I mentioned this port and pole. My, our proposal is to develop Trincomalee Harbor, part of the Trincomalee Harbor and uh, government to form a conglomerate or a company which can be named as a offshore industry services which can be given board of investment and other facilities vis-a-vis -vis the investment and if that can be done you will have a lot of benefits in paying lesser tax to the government to recover your investment but Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka can uh, gain by providing employment to youth in Sri Lanka. You might be knowing Sri Lanka has the highest level of literacy and a lot of youngsters are willing to study in the universities. We are also trying to add these subjects to teach youngsters to be engineers to, or other technicians or even economists to work in this industry. I am not going to explain that much on this. Trincomalee Harbor and Hambantota is also good for that. Har Harbor is the nucleus to develop the marine and also sector in Sri Lanka. So we are now carrying out a feasibility study by the Sri Lanka Ports Authority which is undertaken by a local company, which will provide uh, ground situation, the, 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 I would say the uh, geographical and other details required and uh, marketing aspects, what, how you can develop that industry. Once it is done, government will undertake to attract to invite large companies. I would say companies in, uh, uh, Singapore, Dubai, or European companies can come to Sri Lanka to develop that industry, which is a new industry, other than we do this cold and hot layup work in recording and even in
local companies are working hard on it and local a lot of Sri Lankans are working in this field. Now I don't want to repeat the whole thing again and there are a lot of areas where you can uh, generate income by husbandry, crew management, bunkering, supply oil to this uh, sector. I listed these companies who can come here. You can add more companies, a lot of companies who are now operating in Middle East, Singapore, and even China, I think India is developing fast. And uh, because of the fact that our island is placed in a very convenient location with a beautiful, uh, you know, tourist attractive small island, this is the country where you should end up. Uh, we are also looking at facilities available in the industry, consultancy firms. You can have oversupply of residential properties in Colombo Port City and other areas of Colombo. You, you may not see the landscape of the country, Colombo as Singapore or any other country, because we are in the in the stages of development. But there are state-of-the-art office services available to establish your company here which can get involved in the blue economy for the country. And structure, tax structure for investors are uh, quite uh, attractive for expert companies. High computer literacy, you might be known a lot of Sri Lankans are uh, used, companies are used for outsourcing by European and even in Americas from Sri Lankan soil. I'm, 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 oh, I'm, I'm discussing this, explaining this to, for you to understand. It is not the blue economy we are talking about is part and parcel of our facilities available to develop the blue economy. Not only right around Sri Lanka. Then health and safety, comfortable standard living in for expat families. I know a lot of families lately may have a little reluctant, but now I'm, I can tell you uh, quite a uh, attractive place to come and live and work. Other areas of development, I, you can establish bonded warehouses, which is related to blue economy. They are, we are developing fast on that. And uh, Trinko in Ambantota and even Colombo, for the oil and gas industry, you can store your equipment and uh, dispatch from here from uh, to other oil producing countries in Africa. And uh, during the COVID time, of course, most of the hotels were used for quarantine purposes, and there are various five-star hotels, and even over six-star hotels we have, and uh, quite a few highly developed tourist facilities. And we are also developing, uh, trying to build a transportation liquefied natural gas to from north to western power plants, which I'm not going to explain in detail. And exploration, this is again another area, exploration of liquefied gas, not, I mean gas, which is liquefied in MENA and East and the Northern areas. And uh, in conjunction with the development of those fields, we are also trying to develop offshore big farms, which is open for foreign companies. I think in Northern Island areas, <coughs> Government is moving hybrid power plants to be established, which is a combination of uh, solar, wind farm, as well as generators driven on fossil fuel for images. This is area which is uh, which can be developed in Sri Lanka. Even for the seagoing vessels, boats, you can introduce these uh, uh, facilities. I mentioned about Sophie Farming and nautical tourism and capacity building. I know most of the universities have now uh, started uh, augmenting their, uh, you know, uh, I would say the syllabuses to teach our local youths in these subjects related to the marine and offshore sector. Few uh, professors are in the universities, academia has got together. And uh, supported by the export development board and of industries to develop the skill among these local youths, and uh, so that in few years' time they can be 
of use for our uh, to develop this industry. Uh, I don't want to repeat this particular area again. Uh, subsidiary immediate action plan is to subsidy formation of subsidiaries by Indian companies to in Sri Lanka, especially in the port city. We can also develop temporary birthing facilities in particularly for oil rig birthing for the time being by having more and more boys here and then go for large scale development in building births uh, for oil and gas sector in Trincomalee. I, I don't want to explain, give any highlight about the facilities in Trincomalee, but I can tell you one thing. This is one of the deepest and one of the largest natural harbors of the world. During the World War, British used this as the location where they could hide their submarines even inside the harbor. And they built about over 100 oil tanks now which are being developed with Indian investment. This is area where companies can look at it. And uh, of course, we have, during the past many years, we have developed our uh, highway, I mean, have our own highways to travel from airport to south, north, and east. And uh, also, there's a highway coming from the airport straight to the port city. You may look at these things. This is a map of, a map of uh, Trincomalee where you can do fish farming little out in the outer harbor area. You can do the offshore industry development. You can have a, in one of those nice corners, you can have your nautical tourism center. Lot of lands around this Trincomalee Harbor where which is, uh, there are quite a virgin land in these areas where people can come and invest. And Sri Lanka Ports Authority is willing to discuss with any uh, investors. Now, i am just briefly talk about the liquefied natural gas. I should say not LNG, but it should be NG, which is liquefied to minus 190, I think 160 degrees, so that it becomes a liquid for transportation purpose. Sri Lanka has found the natural gas and now in the process of uh, producing it, which is connected with the blue economy. And uh, petroleum resource development area, they have they are, the, they are the authority on this. You may go into the, their website and look at what they are doing and also promote yourself in the industries which is connected with the natural gas development, which is a new industry which Sri Lanka is expecting to develop in time to come. So in 2018 to up to now, we uh, they developed the uh, the collecting data. I don't want to explain much about this, but this is part of the blue economy. I think uh, our uh, industries minister can share these slides for you to read that lesson, then you'll get some idea. This is just to show what we, the oil we may have, or the gas we may have. Covery Basin is the northern part, which is quite close to the Indian uh, continent. And uh, I realize I've been doing some uh, exploration in the Kauri Basin area. We, we, we assume that we have oil here in the shallow waters. In the Mana Basin between India and Sri Lanka, they have found these uh, deposits of uh, natural gas. And uh, although I think they have embarked on developing a map where they want to see potential areas for development. And uh, now uh, I would like to conclude my presentation to you. I have, there have a certain uh, technical hiccups. This is the first uh, presentation organized by Industry Development, Minister of Industries and Industry IDB. They were pushing us giving us very short time, but we thought there is a, is a task if they are performed diligently. And I hope they will support you in time to come. And I wish them good luck. Thank you, everybody. If uh, the, uh, you can uh, give closing remarks. So if anybody needs any, uh, any information on this, 
you can directly contact myself as I am one of the senior advisors to the Marine Chamber of Commerce. Sorry, Marine Chamber. And also I'm still working as on advisory capacities and uh, I work pro bono. I don't ask money for my services or do anything to develop this industry. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to all the listeners.